All right, here we go. Monday, and I'm tired. I worked my ass off all weekend. Dude. I know you did. I'll let you handle everything. Oh, no boy. So it's Monday. That's all you got. That's all I got. Parents it's Monday. Speed. Hey, we're Parents Speed nine zero eight seven five one zero two one one. Call us if you. Nah, they're not going to call. Do you don't need to but remember, like power, like power and speed on Facebook. Share it, iTunes, like it, rate it, and we have a full house here tonight. Believe it or not. I didn't get the whole first part of that. Me neither. Good. Yeah, we got some guests in the house. We got uh, some listener. Uh, I don't want to call them fans because they're not fans. They're friends. They're friends of ours. Well, I mean, fans, friends. I mean, <laughs> uh, introduce yourselves, guys. My name is Anthony Ferguson. Anthony, uh, Anthony's like the first caller we ever yeah, right? had. And uh, Anthony, bought, uh, he brought his bodyguard with him. <laughs> yeah, he's a big dude. I ain't fucking with that guy. <laughs> Hi, I'm Josh Footman. See, I, I've met these guys. They they hung out with me for, damn, it must have been like an hour at Summer Nationals, right? Yep. Which isn't even a race anymore. I nope. forgot about that. That just crossed my mind now. Yep. We were talking about on our way um, in the truck up here about how that. Kind of sucks. sucks. It sucks a lot. It yeah. kind of suck. It royally sucks. I mean, they replaced it with Virginia, but that's a it's a ride. Yeah. I mean, it's five hours to Dinwiddie. It's a cool track, though. But anyway, yeah, these guys want to come into the studio, and, and we're going to talk about I don't know, Drag Week and their projects and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I mean, look, I, I want to point out to everybody, I'm not, you know, as much as a, a psychopath as you make me out to be. I don't, I, I mean, if guests want to come by, you know, if they're in the area, yeah. for sure, let us know. I, I think it's great. Anthony actually called in, I think the first time you called was when we were talking about the self-learning EFI stuff. Yeah. If I remember right. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And now you're you're en route to a, a, a bigger and better project, I guess. Yeah. Drag Week. Yeah, you're going to give it a shot, huh? Yes. So you're going to do the the you, the regular conventional small block because you got stuff already. You got a blower and you got the mount stuff for yes. a small block, right? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, we were just discussing about uh, about what parts are available and what the best way to do that is. Yeah, we were discussing it off air. We should have waited. Yeah, right. We had a whole, you know, I don't know, <laughs> half an half hour, hour we'll, conversation. We'll have nothing to talk about later. <laughs> but uh, but Tad will take care of it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah Tad will right. fill that right in. Yes, Lucky me. Will. So, um, Tad, you, you did bring something up before that you wanted to talk about. We can uh, chat about that a little bit. This Cadillac engine, brand, yes. brand new? Well, it's, it falls into the category of everybody's wondering what's going to happen with that new mid-engine Corvette, blah, blah, blah. Is it going to be a double overhead cam? Now, there's the Cadillac CT6V. Whoa. Which is going to have the double over, a 4.2 liter double overhead cam, twin turbo, five, 550. 50 horsepower and then a five or a four. I can't remember. There's two horsepower classes for two, the, you know, two cars that it's going to be in and cat and it's going to be introduced to Cadillac first. Nice. And Which is kind of weird. Yeah. Because usually the Corvette is the premier, gets the motor yeah. first. Like when the LS motor came out, it came out yeah. in Corvettes in 97 and then they slid it into F bodies, you know, like into the. And pickup trucks and vans and. Yeah, I think the pickups came later. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't. I don't remember. I, I had had that discussion. When did they start putting it in box trucks? I don't know. Okay. Maybe I don't have know. to ask Matt. Hamill, Maybe it doesn't matter. He probably knows yeah. actually. Um. So all right. So but this Cadillac engine. It's it, there. It's interesting. And then it, you know, because it's a double overhead cam. All the Ford guys are going to start screaming. Oh, they're copying off the mod. Blah blah blah. But I'm looking at it. It's got the reverse heads, as in the exhaust and turbos are in the lift or in the valley. And what's that called, Todd? A hot V8. There you go. I think it's actually just called a hot V, but a that's hot okay. V, but yeah. Well, it's a V8, but anyway. That was pretty well, good. No, Tad, it's a, Tad yeah. remembered that. Is it a V8? It's a V8. It's well, a 4.2 V8? Yeah. It's a 4.2 liter. It's, I didn't, it, Mike saw the same pictures I did. It's very hard to see what's there because it's just engulfed in coolant lines. Oh yeah, there's the, a there's liquid. a lot of hoses on this fucking a lot thing. of shit going on. We, we were trying to figure out how the in, how the intake could actually work because it was so small going in on the exhaust side. It's like a little tiny reverse header that goes yeah. up, and the intercoolers are on top uh, are on top, and they're air to water. But, but wait a minute, so yeah, of course they are. <laughs> what you want to have that argument? No, <laughs> not at all. We can. We should have people call in about that. Go ahead. What's a better option in a in a street driven Tahoe? A front mount <laughs> or a, a, a air to water system. So anybody wants to call in Mogul, help me out here. Um, I already had a deep conversation with Mogul about tariffs and everything else. So that was oh I'm, I'm done with Mogul for at least six months. <laughs> oh boy. 
No, but the, the engine, they, they said one, it's going to be a, uh, one, two, four, seven or eight fire, you know, so it can act a cylinder, you know, right. depending you on the need. Shut off cylinders. And it's a, you know, stop start engine too. It's also going to have electronic waste gates. Wait, time out. What? It's a stop start engine. Yeah. So when you come to a stoplight? Yep. Yeah, but that's, I that's, mean, anybody that's can on, do that. Yeah, most everything now. That's nothing to do with it. It's also got variable- uh, Don't ever bring that up again. I would kill somebody <laughs> if my car did that. Dude, I would, I would- First time, first time ever happened to me, I was in uh, Florida with a Jeep Cherokee, and I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, that- And I, fi- I finally had to pull over and get into the, you know, the screen, the computer, and shut it off, because it was making me crazy. <laughs> but then every time you started, it came back on, right? Every time you start the car, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you can only shut it off temporarily. That's some that bullshit sucks. right there. Yeah. But it's also got a uh, variable vein oil pump, so it can change how much oil is being fed to the engine. Part- partially, I think, because it's got oil squirters to cool the pistons. Yep. And probably when it, it sees boost and knows heat, more oil is going to be injected to cool the pistons. Um, it's a lot of shit going on. Uh, it, it's going to be one of those ones you want the first year because that one's probably going to be breaking left and right, you know? You know, little. I don't. Happen. I don't know about that. I think they've. I think GM's got a pretty good engineering handle yeah. on this stuff. The one thing that I would say is that reading further into it, uh, I don't. I mean, I Does like the oil pump. Have a volute. Mm, really, good do? question. Well, it's, that's a legitimate it's a, question. It's a valid question. You already got the chat room guys fucking <laughs> tooling on me about a pair of water. That's all right. <laughs> they uh, should be tooling on you. It's 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 silly. It's a better deal for what I'm going to do. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Thermal mass. Dope. All, all we're going to talk about. Big Thermal dope. mass. Oh, from reading what I read about this thing, the technology to move the turbos inside makes sense. Yeah, really? It, the it, heat? It does. The heat, the distance between exhaust and into the turbos, the packaging, everything about it's good. It's like BMW So, so t- where are the turbos? In the in V the intake, of the motor. In the intake valve. Inside. Well, yes. Well, uh, well, they're obviously under the intake. Do you ever, you ever see a diesel? The mm. diesel turbos, they always pop them like right, right in the center. No. I've like, never, well, the I've new never. BMWs are always taken apart at a- Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just like that. Yeah. yeah. There's, now, they're wedged in the valley. Now, the diesels that I know of don't run the exhaust, like mine doesn't run the exhaust backwards, you know, like through the intake side or what we would normally consider the intake side. Um, but like the BMWs and a couple of these things, they essentially run the heads backwards from conventional. Mm-hmm. And then it's a very straight, short, hot path to the turbo. So the exhaust ports are where the intake ports yes. were. Correct. Yes. So you have intake banks on the outside. Yes. Correct. And that's what I mean. It's got Which like a header. Which makes sense for cooling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got a header like upside down and there's just two tubes that go off. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's a neat looking deal. Yeah. Uh, Josh showed me a picture of it. Yeah. But here's the thing that I'm. Because I'm, Tad couldn't pull up a picture. No. That you would know, be our, too te- much to our, ask for. our tech guy. <laughs> Way too much to ask for. Yes. I, I would think that the problem for me that I would have with that is that because of the, the configuration of where everything is. How are you going to really upgrade turbos on this thing? I mean, I'm sure people, the, the aftermarket will take care of it and I'll probably make some stuff that's better, but it, that really is a pain in the ass that, cause that departs from everything we've ever done. Well, the, the, the physical size of the turbo is going to be is, limited. It's going to be limited. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They'll have to do something with wheels and now whatever. if they if they can make 20 pounds of boost with those factory turbos, chances are pretty good. You know, th- this is where you got to have the conversation. How much is really enough for a streetcar? If you could lean on the programming of this thing and make a thousand, well, what more do you need to do? Leave right. everything there. Probably need 1100. For you what? Know, you know how that goes. I, I don't know. It's on Dyna Queens, you know. Yeah. Well, it is a cool deal. Definitely a cool deal. An- just, Anthony, what are your thoughts? I wouldn't want to work on it. No. Exactly. Looking at that picture. Yeah, I know. Everything looks like Just the serpentine belts, you're like, you can't even see them. They're, you know, is it going to be from the underside when you replace them or what? You know, it's funny. It's one thing. It, it, it's it's glaringly apparent that engineers don't care about working on this shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they just, all they care about is- Their you know, number. You know? The CAD program to get it into the envelope. <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah. The spark <laughs> plugs don't hit anything, so <laughs> it's okay. Well, you know, thinking about this from the design side- those guys, you know, the, the people at GM, if you're really doing a, a mid-engine Corvette, that really helps the packaging out a lot. Sure. If if you were held yeah. in on a turbocharged sure. deal. Absolutely. I mean, think about all that shit you took that used to be hanging off the outside of the motor and just stuck it all in the middle. Yeah. Plus well, the, 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 the super Porsche, the 918 or whatever it is, is the same deal. Yep. Center uh, turbos and all that stuff with that engine. I, <laughs> I, I mean, I think it's neat. The, the best thing about that is, is today- for whatever reason, I was talking about GM cars and I went to the Corvette website. Uh-huh. 
I hate the new Corvettes. I never liked them. Never, never a fan. You mean the seven? Yeah. No, well, the, yeah, the C7. Yeah. Never a fan. I agree. Um, but I got to tell you, they got the ZR1 on the, on the homepage. Like if you go to the Corvette section, you click yep. ZR1 and it comes up in orange. Yeah. With the wing. That's a bad motherfucker in orange. I yeah. like that. Well, Big old hood on it. Yeah. When I was in Kuwait, they had one of them in, in the mall on display and it is a really good looking car. Only it had that, you know, there's two wings. You can get that big road race wing, yeah. like, which is silly. Yeah. And then they have a little, you know, lip spoiler, which looks good, but it did have the big wing in Kuwait. Yeah. I was, uh, I saw it and I was like, wow, it looks to me, it looks different. Maybe the hood changed the whole outlook of the car. Yeah. But the back, know, back still looks like shit though. I yeah. Think. Well, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to see what the mid engine is like. <laughs> what? Air to water on a street driven car is stupid. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I guess I should oh, run I out and get cathedral port heads or anything else if I'm going to go I full just, retard, huh? I just love my guys. <laughs> One thing I will say about this Cadillac motor, all the coolant lines is going to be hell trying to chase down the coolant leak. Yeah, do you yeah. see that? I mean, uh, there's yeah. shit all over the place. Just, Intercooler coolant. And, and yeah. it was funny. I was just talking to Jeff uh the other over this past weekend because he uh looks like he heard a head gasket so he took his whole car apart and we were talking about how easy the new stuff is that there's not really a lot going on there <laughs> you know i mean com- compared to like you until know until now well you, you open up a hood of a carbureted car that As was small, like an emissions yeah. carburetor car oh my god yeah that's true you know they Getty. yeah it's crazy and you, you know so we were talking about his car well now you look at that thing you're like all right we're, yeah, we're back, right back back there yeah right Ooh. back to when the tpi first came out we can never hot rod it now you know well i'm i'm sure the aftermarket will take care of it and i'm sure it'll be it'll be better and better and better i'm sure they'll get there but it just it to me it just poses some limitations but then again i don't like change <laughs> <laughs> i'd still have a c5 body design corvette if it was up to me you know the c5s are good looking i think they so. are but uh here here no they still no. have the pop-ups didn't they Yes. Which is, I think, a true, cor- true Corvette has pop-up headlights. Th- thank anyway. you, Tad. I finally agree with you on something, <laughs> other than your disturbing uh, he'll work decision and facial hair. He'll work something out. <laughs> Not too long. No, I do like the C5s. I like the 6s, too. But a C5 race car, actually, the the, the hard top one that looks like a convertible mm-hmm. as a race car, I think that's the best-looking Corvette. Yeah, that was uh, the Coupe and... Yeah. The Z06. Yeah. I guess we're the two that look that way. Yep. And the convertible has that same line. Yeah. Convertible has that's the same why, look. That's because, I mean, I didn't want a convertible because I wanted a convertible. I didn't like the hatch. It was just me. Right. But. Oh, uh, the hatch in the back? Yeah. Yeah. Goofy. Yep. I thought it was goofy. But you're a drop top guy. No, I have it. I know. Tad. Mike. Your car runs. Yes. This is a, this is Correct. a big news. And all the things that were living in the. the tailpipe or all ejected into the shop yeah, it must have been i mean if anybody didn't see those pictures i'm sure they're still somewhere on our facebook page this really was a moldy car that sat for like two years in a parking lot well how could you see the pictures i mean the pictures are up for 10 seconds and then there's hamburgers and pizza <laughs> and i mean they go they they just go flying by too fast this but is anyway. true the wonder of facebook yeah and i have the one where i put that circle track hood on it that's oh, that stupid did, that i did find that one again man i was like oh, i gotta put this one back out there that's yeah. the best the best hood scoop possible so now i'm gonna ask you i don't yes. want you to get mad i don't want you to get all fucking huffy take a you, breath you have a little bit take of a, a breath, tendency time. to fly off the handle a little bit when i ask you a question yeah what are we waiting for take a breath take like a breath. like what is what what is next the hubs okay where are the hubs they're at the shop and i have the two hub Axle bolts, I got to give to Tom. Okay. So Strong the hubs bolts. made it there with no bolts? Yeah. I'll get the bolts there. Okay. Tomorrow morning, they'll be, they'll be there. Can I inquire as to why the bolts didn't make it there? Because they were in the Lincoln. I took the truck, the uh, hubs. Oh, okay. Come on, man. You've yeah, forgotten on. something yeah. at least once in your life, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> One once, okay. but. All right. So. He brought them here and it reminded me I have to take them. Now, what about this tire dilemma here? Which tire? Bringing tires to Dyna with. It's got the tires on, everything's on it. All right, so you did all that already. Yeah, I, okay. to, I put them on on Saturday. The, okay. new, the new ones? Yeah. How's it look? See, that was a detail we didn't get earlier today when yeah. we were talking to him. Richard what? was impressed, too. They're rotor rims. What wheel, what, what the, which ones they look like? What are, They're sub-zeros. <laughs> they, they were the ones that were, they were sitting on when I was here. I got to look. I have, I have time out. Okay. Well, I, <laughs> Carry think, on. I think this is a time for a power and speed pull. Mm-hmm. How much power will Tad's car make? Now, I am at a severe disadvantage because I have no idea what Subarus make. I have I don't know what the turbos are like or whatever. So, 
I will let everybody weigh in, and then I'll pick something in the middle. Oh, they're all right. What? They're, they're pretty good looking. Those? Yeah. Yeah. They're not bad. Proto Sub Zeros. Those look like the wheels on my Corvette that you don't like. Well, they look good on a Subaru. <laughs> they're exactly the wheels oh, of my- That's great. My one Corvette, you're like, those wheels are awful. They are. <laughs> but they look <laughs> just like just like that. All right. Yeah, my car's a I, I was door, picking they? on you when I said that, okay? <laughs> I was jealous because they're so nice. All right, so we're going to have a poll? Yeah. What What do we think What do we think it'll make? What turbo is that? That's a uh, an HTA 68? I Yeah, we're going to- the, the listeners are like, what turbo, what this, what wheel? I think it's an HTA 71 is what it is. So wait a minute. You don't even know what turbo it is? Is it 68? No. Yeah, I think it's a 68. All right. So it's a Force Performance uh, HTA 68, which is like a, I think it's between an 18 and a 20G. Was it an FP or was it just a? Well, if it's, it, no, it, it's an FP. All right. They're the ones that make those. Then it is. Yeah. Yep. So I, I think it's going to make, um, oh, somebody said 425 wheel. That's lofty. Is this on, yeah, is this high. on, uh, not E85. It's on gas. It's on gas. It's going to, it's going to, the first pull, the first good pull, it's going to make 382. Better than I was thinking, but I was thinking 350 for zone, but no, they're pretty good. That's the billet wheel one. What intercooler do you have? You have a good one? Yeah, I got that big uh, front mount. Uh, is it air to water? No. Oh, you're air to air. Here we go. You are so fucked. Here we go. <laughs> but it's not no heat soak because it's not over the engine. So good. Good. I have a valid reason for that. I know. I know. I do. Okay. Dickhead. <laughs> So you think 382 to the tire? Yeah, I mean, that's a guess. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I mean, my Chinese 20G made, you know, right at 400. Now, are we talking race fuel? Or are we talking street drivable? No, no, 93. 93. Yeah. yeah. What, that, did you, what did yours make? Well, with, you mean with the- Street pre- fuel. Uh-oh. Who's Perimeter's here? been violated. Who, Who the hell's here? here? I don't know. It can't be Jeff. He's got no vehicles. It could, yeah. <laughs> no, it could be Jeff. It's probably, it might be the FedEx guy. I right. wonder what if that came across the, <laughs> they're like, okay, Mike's got somebody talking to him. <laughs> I, I think we've talked about this, but I have a driveway alarm and it actually goes through the Sono system and announces to me that somebody's here. Yep. So except when Tad shows up, it announces for some really vile things about Tad. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Last week I was making it say shit when he walked in. <laughs> <Yeah. that. laughs> um, so what, what did yours make on pump fuel? I'm sorry. Um, with the 20 G it made. 397, something like that. Okay. And your turbo is a little lesser? Or? No, no. Mine's, mine's a little, mine was a little bigger. Okay. So than, you th- than his. think 380 might be a little lofty. No, actually, because his is a better turbo. Mine was old, a piece of crap. Okay. Tad, what do you think? 350. I'll be Whoa. fine right now. Whoa. I want to drive the goddamn thing. It's been that, but it, it's been that freaking long. It'll be like a new car. Do you guys want to get in on this? Good, man. See, that's a problem. Nobody knows about Subarus except Subaru yeah, right. guys. And that's my disclaimer. I'm I'm trying to put it all together in my head. It's four cylinders. Okay. And it's got a little turbo. All right. Conservative 340. Okay. There you go. I'm going to say, well, go ahead, Anthony. P- p- guess? No. Um, it's okay. Don't be shy. It's not going to cost you anything. I would guess around 350. Okay, so you're going to guess the same thing as Tad? You guys want to hold hands or something? <laughs> what kind of thing is that to and do? And you said 380. You could have said 351. <laughs> and you said 382. I did. I'm going with 383. I have confidence Look at you. in all this all right. stuff. I okay. do. He, Tad's got the right injectors. He's followed just about everything we've told him to do. <laughs> Sorry. What? It, whenever I look at the chat room, it, I always see something funny. Somebody just said your Taylor Swift blow up doll just arrived on FedEx. <laughs> Oh, you know, <laughs> you guys are real douchebags. I got to stop looking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good shit. Uh, Funny these, these smart guys don't fucking call in. It's probably true. Bunch of sissies. <laughs> it's not a Taylor Swift doll. You've had that for years. Yeah, right? yeah. It's been patched a few times. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> All, All right. right. So we're, when we're, uh, we're when is the schedule to actually run this thing? Like to actually get a number? I have to get talk to Kevin yet, get an appointment with him. We've got to put the hub on, make sure. Oh, the hubs aren't on yet. No. Okay. All right. That's, That's easy. Well, though. the hubs are there, but I don't have the uh, nuts to install them. 
Yeah, nuts on oh, your that chin. Bolts. Oh, pretty awesome. All right, so Tom is bringing those yes. parts there. Are you putting them on or are they putting them They're on? They're probably going to put them on. Okay. I got to work during the day. I don't know. I know. I'm just trying to ascertain the, the amount of delays that are Easy. Gonna, yeah, Take a breath. Settle mm-hmm. down, Ted. We're see, not. most people that are on Facebook see what I do during the day. So. Yeah, and by the way, everybody, who was right about Facebook? Little, well, no, little no. dirtier who, who than right everybody. The Android problem. And, so. and the Android problem as well. Little dirtier than everybody thinks. Oh, yeah. What's up with that Android mm-hmm. problem? Mm-hmm. I, don't, are, I don't know. It's I don't, easy to fish through, you guys. I don't have that problem. Yeah, that would only be me. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it would be. You got an iPhone? Yes. You got an iPhone? Cool. What fuck's wrong with so me? So Zuckerberg <laughs> likes you. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a little bit of a mess. And like I told everybody, I was talking to somebody the other day when I was trying to explain what happened. There goes, see, that was FedEx. The yeah. eruption off and left. Yep. Um, when when I signed into the Messenger app, and I mean, I'm very conscious of all this stuff, it asked me, do, do you want to allow your contacts to be alerted that you've downloaded Messenger from, right. from your phone? And then you get a, a dialogue box that says, okay, allow access to my contacts. No. And I said, no. And then it got goofy. Then, like, you had to find a way to skip it. It wasn't. It yeah. wasn't just like, well, you remember, know what, I'm pissed I, off. I remember a conversation, yeah. Mm-hmm. They were trying to strong arm you. Yep. Um, got past that, and then it was probably like two weeks later. When was it? I'm trying to think when. Yeah, it was about two weeks after the Messenger app, and a customer from another country Facebook friended me. There is no way anybody would have known that yep. name was me other than that. And that's when you lost your that's shit? That's when I lost my shit. Just de- deleted everything. Gone. And, yeah. Now the account's still there, and because I need it, it's linked into to other things. But I'm not. I'm not going to be on that. Yeah. I will not be. I mean, I. I don't even know. I. I wouldn't even trust making a bullshit account because they got my stuff one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm. I'm not down with this. And I'm, I guess you'd have to get a phone. Oh yeah, I'm going to carry around a Facebook yeah, a, phone, a burner phone. What a loser. <laughs> All right, that was just a suggestion. I don't want to talk to anybody that much. All right. You're missing out on the whole Facebook world. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm... Uh, <laughs> a lot of shit going What a loss. I'm missing Tad's fucking lunch. Dude, it's cheeseburgers from all over the world. God. You know, can uh, I... No. Uh, okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Talk about the new cheeseburger place. So, somebody told me I should do a podcast about, you know, power and feed. I got an email. <laughs> That's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> I got an email from a place that said, we saw you were, you ate at Roy Rogers. We'd like to pay you for reviews on fast food places. I was like, oh my God. Shut up. Really? I shit you not. Why don't I get those things? I guess you don't. We have a listener post on calling. Facebook. Oh, yay. Go. Yes. Hey, what are you doing? Wow, that sounded weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, sweetie. Must be one of your friends, huh? <laughs> Oh, come on. I talked to you all day. You should know who I am. Come on now. I just bought an AR-15. You know that. I know who it is. Tom Uh, doesn't. I have no idea. (laughs) This is Matt Blasco. Oh, Blasco. Yes, thanks for getting those pistons and all that stuff. Oh, you're welcome, man. They look good? i got to go to the border and pick them up tomorrow. Oh, for Christ's sakes. Well, see, I'll let you know once I uh, don't get uh, searched and gloved at the border with those things on me. Well, don't bring that AR-15. Yeah. Well, but you can't leave it home. It'll be killing things. <laughs> yeah, you leave those things not when you're not paying attention to them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The mind of their own. So what's up? No, just uh, just finally actually got back to listening to this thing, had some time. I'm usually uh, with old lady at this time looking at her horse, so <laughs> thought I'd rather uh, have some car chats and see what's up with you guys what's what's going on with your deal are you um uh, i know when we last left off we were talking about uh what you got to do to get your thing in shape for drag week is the plan to go even though this is far 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 away from you yeah pat miker and i uh we're talking about it i think we're gonna go in his stacker and uh head out to atlanta okay so it might help and then fly down if not we'll probably just hop in and drive down there and watch rich Guido. uh <laughs> punish his car all the way there and back. No, so he's going to drive all the way there, huh? Oh, yeah, he's crazy. I don't know how he does it. He might go there and back just as a dry run, like, next week. <laughs> he, so, yeah, he'll, he'll have that turbo hanging off it. It seems to seems to be coming along pretty good. He's been sending me progress pictures and such. And uh, Oh, yeah, that's right. He was converting to turbochargers. I forgot. Mm-hmm. Oh, he had to, he had yeah, to post some he, pictures. Versus the blower to the turbocharger, because he didn't really change the engine that much. 
so you'll get a complete back-to-back and see what it actually uh, changes, and then we can actually look at uh, brake-specific fuel consumption if it changes versus from the supercharger and turbo and have actual back-to-back data on it because we've had it on the Dyno Plus. We have all his data logs, too, because he's not changing his injectors or nothing, and he's, uh, you know, it's all air, water, intercooled, so he should... uh, We'll see what the IETs end up. And well, wait a minute. Those air-to-water things are no good, are they? <laughs> oh, just terrible. Yeah, on race cars. I don't, a, uh, I don't think I've ever run a car without one that's anything of consequence. I'm going to hold your shit up at the when border you- if you disagree with me, <laughs> Blasco. I can recall that shit, you know. Yeah. And it's paid for already. Ooh. Now, now, Matt, is, is this stuff for your own personal car? Is that what this is? Which, the oh, the stuff at the border? Yeah. yeah. Um, Tom got me a set of pistons. Uh, Manly made me a set and some new valves just because you, you put 3,000-plus miles on a set of valves. You kind of think about you should probably put a new set in the heads after beating on them for that while. Because when you do a valve job on them, when you're facing them, there's almost like divots that end up from the valve seats. Mm-hmm in the valves so they get beat pretty good when you're running titanium valves and even the thin canal exhausts aren't as bad but you get it's almost like a little divot in the face of the valve after running that many miles you know i didn't even think about that but we should have we should have coded we should we should have crn coded those things so we should have done but you're not running anywhere near the valve spring pressure like i'm running around 400 open or on the seat and around a thousand open so no i'm talking about we should have crn CRN coded yours oh those ones yeah Yeah. uh, because it it wouldn't have beat up the valves as much it beats up the seats it's just easier to fix the seats than get new valves now what did you guys make him a custom a custom piston yeah yeah because they i mean i don't think you have anything in the catalog like that what'd you use the big block forging like the same ones those heavy ass ones yeah yeah (laughs) yep same ones they uh, they came out nice we made them intake right. valves and pistons. Really nice. All right, so hopefully you'll be back together in, and in better shape than you were last year because last year you got your car done and, like, left. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of famous for that, it seems. Uh, this year I'm going to actually work on it and sort out the short times and actually get the thing out of the hole because my – I was trying to run those ET Street R's and they're just not swapping tires on drag week. Mm-hmm. It, when you're in, say, a nine-second car, ten-second car, you can probably get away with it. But as soon as you go under that, it's it sure does seem to hurt the short times. Just going to, from a DOT tire to a full-on slick. Yeah. Yeah. Like I used to even one twenty sixty foot on my slicks, even not whipping on it. And I think my best sixty foot of the whole time was one thirty four, one thirty two, on that um, seven sixty pass. I think it was one thirty eight. It was that bad. Mm-hmm. Why is that? just the the road uh, road junk ground into them not really it's just the the casings on those tires and they're a little bit smaller when you uh hit them that hard they just seem to wad up and we tried a bunch of different tire pressures if you look at some of the pictures they wad up pretty good but i don't know if it's the casing or what there are guys running pretty quick on them um i'm going to reset up my four link and move the instant center um quite a bit back and put a lot more hit in the tires and then unload the tires with the wheelie bars i've been talking to a few different guys on different ways to help the thing out because it should really be doing like a 110 60 foot 115 kind of in that area as a consistent wow that's moving out especially in that big ass car yeah that's well you look at a lot of these heavy cars are doing really good 60 foot so it's there's no excuse not to you get that 330 time down everything else just improves that much better it seems sure Bigger incremental gains. Down and, you below. know, that brings up, we were always talking about getting a tire guy. It would be nice to have a tire guy, and we yeah, could I discuss know. The, the slick versus the street tire, what the real, you know, benefits, uh, you know, like what can what can be gained one way or the other, radial to bias ply, uh, compounds versus horsepower level and weight. There, there's actually a lot to unpack. White walls. Doing. White walls, yeah. Yeah, you look at what radial guys are doing nowadays, but then again, you look at the uh, track prep is pretty much – you know, set up for radials where at drag week you're running with everybody. So they kind of, the prep isn't too bad, but when you look at it at the end of the day, it's when you're trying to run a radial and run it the all out. You know, your phone's ringing, right? Yeah, that's, <laughs> they'll, they'll get the hint here, I think, in a minute. 
<laughs> They're calling you. Hey, look, look who was on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the Border Patrol scheduling your inspection. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. They put the glove on already. Yeah. There, I got rid of them. <laughs> um, but back to the tires, when you're running a full-on drag radial and trying to run it. Um, what? <laughs> what? Telling me. It's Richard you're Guido. screwing with me, aren't you? <laughs> that's a rich, rich, rich mogul. <laughs> you're smashing. <There>. It might uh, <laughs> Yeah, it might be Rich Mogul. Do you know Rich Mogul? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and then I get another call on my other phone. <laughs> sure. You, why, why don't you put stereo on, too, while you're at it? <laughs> yeah, we can. <laughs> keep calling. You why can't not? make this shit up. No, you can't. You can't. I don't know why these people keep calling me. Because they know you're on the air, man. You're you're a star now. Everybody's hearing them, so that they're like trying to like when you when you know your friends on TV, yeah. you keep calling this phone. Yeah. yeah, but it's the radio, so you can't go stand behind them, you know, and make faces. Canadian Chuck Norris calling. <laughs> <laughs> is it really? Is it him? Oh no, it's I don't know. I didn't even look. <laughs> Guido saying answer, Michael. <laughs> answer the dev phone, yeah. All right, I think we're gonna punt you. In a minute. Yeah, I think so, because they keep calling me. Oh, no, there they're gone. No, they're not gone. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> it ain't they're me. Like gone. somebody just thought, no, it ain't me. Definitely not me. Um, anyways, with the track prep there, it's kind of marginal, so the better tire you can have, the better. Going yeah, but like if you, I, I know that, like, back in the, you know, discussing, like, the super stock stuff, when the radials were first coming out, there was an awful lot in compound versus vehicle weight versus horsepower and you know that was that was the big adjustment that people had to make and in the beginning and again the you know my information is dated that the compound was really touchy on the drag radials i guess because the way the tire actually works it doesn't lay on the track the same or something when they no. when they launch so everything that everybody kind of knew about the compound required for the weight and the horsepower sort of changed yep but i so i mean I, again, a tire guy, and you know, like everybody said, you know, the radial, the drag radial guys now they're going so damn fast on a small tire. I, I think there's, it's worth getting somebody on if we can. Yeah, we will. I mean, but I had to choose. I mean, a lot of it is in track prep, though, too, on that stuff. Though the suspension, like you've looked what it's went now, the stuff that you buy for Mustangs, they used to have, oh, you bolt this on. Now they have the upper control arms and lower control arms where you can adjust them every 16th of an inch now and move it up and down to exactly what it needs for hit, right? Mm -hmm. Change your instant center, just like that. So it's not as simple as just throwing a set of radials on that a lot of people, it looks like, oh, that's great. But then again, with any tire, when you're running any sort of power, you can put a, you think of what Dave Morgan used to say for chassis setup, and then now that's 20, 30 years old now. It doesn't really apply nowadays for the amount of weight to horsepower where a race car used to be 3,000 pounds at most and make 800 horse. Now it's 3,500 pounds and making 3,000 horse, right? Yeah. Yeah, power has become plentiful yeah. <laughs> pretty quickly. It's uh, it's definitely now more of a game of getting down track. Way more power and speed. Yeah, yeah. this is true. Yeah, that's right. All right, so when are you going to have your shit back together? Oh, I got to go up to the machine shop here once I get those pistons and throw it in the good old uh, CK-10 and give her and see... Uh, well, I got to actually pull the sleeves out of the block. The one sleeve ended up dropping a bit between the cylinders. You can run your finger across the sleeve to the block, and you can catch your fingernail on it when I actually turned it up there. So I'm going to pull the sleeves out of the block, deck the block, put the sleeves back in, and then deck the sleeves down and probably leave them about 5 thou proud. Okay. That way, if they ever want to move around, it won't, uh, it won't go below the deck. Does um the, does the sleeve press into a receiver at the bottom, or is it pressing a receiver in the top, or what? What? There's a receiver in the top on those ones. Okay. But it's all dry sleeve, so it's they're pretty easy to pull out. But when you put them in, you just uh, throw them in uh, nitroglycerin kind of thing, pop them in, and then they just slide in. You just got to make sure you do it real quick. You mean nitrogen? Or nitrogen, or yeah, nitroglycerin, whatever the heck that is. <laughs> no, they're slightly different, yeah, but one, whatever, whatever. One could be very well, problematic. Yeah. yeah, one blows up, one. Yeah, one will kill you. Yeah, one will kill you, and the one will uh, <laughs> freeze your hands off. That's right. But uh, yeah, you do those if you've ever watched. I think I have a video of it when you're sliding sleeves and just make sure that they go down because as soon as they go in the block, they tighten up almost instantly. Yeah, it's like, I mean, years ago, I mean, because I, I did work at Charlie Weston's when I was, you know, much, much younger. And I remember 
uh, putting pistons in, put wrist pins oh, and pistons. Wrist pins, yeah. And you just drop them in like a little thermos of liquid nitrogen, and you just take it, boom, and it's just right in. And then yep. just a second, you know, just sitting in there a second, it's right in there. Yep. So, yeah, same thing. Well, they used to heat the blocks and, and freeze the sleeves. Yeah. So it would give you a little more clearance to get in, but, yeah. A millisecond more time. Yeah, gives you half a second. All right, so you're going to keep us informed when you get this thing ready, right? Yeah, I'll throw it on the dyno, and uh, probably I'll put it on Facebook there and, uh, and Michael turn Mason. it up and see where it's at. Um, I get a new cam profile for it that Mark Campbell at Comp Cams did for me, so we'll see uh, how much it changes the uh, the characteristics of how it spools and what where the power is, because I've had it on the dyno before, and He's thinking it'll spool a little better and make a little bit better bottom, but still go rev out on the top. That's a whole nother voodoo in itself and cam profiles on those. It's just a lot wider, a little bit wider LSA now, but a lot less duration, it seems. And I can't remember, I can't imagine that there's a lot of people with experience in, you know, your kind of combination. I mean, how many, you know, supercharged turbo cam though, you can be out and it's not, you're not going to notice it that much. It's just going to be more in where it actually builds its torque like i know mine i've had to play with my converter a bit but my cam is quite big compared to you look at say an ls cam i'm quite a bit larger you look at ls cams 250 at 50 is a big ls cam even into the 260s where you get into a big block that's little stuff that's street like really easy street stuff or you know in the 270s 280s at 50 i even look at um what steve morris is doing on some of the supercharger stuff they're 290, 300 at 50 kind of thing. Looking at the cam profiles coming out of there, which are pretty rough on valve train, but. What do you do? You treat yours like a big block Chevy? Like for, for guessing at. Well, that's what I mean. Like there's not a lot of people doing what he's doing with that motor. It's right. Just but not. Uh, yeah. But I mean, head flows what it flows. And, yeah. and he knows that. Yeah, and the, I don't, you don't treat it any different than a big Chevy. Cause in theory, it kind of is for the most part. Right. That's a, a predator, of, right? A predator top yeah, end. Predator yeah. Stuff. It's like yeah. a, big G for a big Duke type yep. deal. Yep. It's big. Uh, it's like a cathedral port, but <laughs> of course. <laughs> no, it's actually a square port where it's at, right? Yeah, that's true. It actually is real square, right? Yeah. Oh, they flow really good. They're full cnc I think they're 465s. It'd be better if they were cathedral shaped or something. <laughs> Everything's better cathedral ports. Or Just listen to them, guys. Or shaped like a vagina. All right, so you're going to get your thing together, and I guess uh, I guess Rich is going to get his together, too. And uh, I'm really curious to see what Rich's changes are, you know, like going from one to another. And I'm curious to see how it how it runs, you know, like at the track. I mean, obviously, it's still going to be a stick, correct? Yeah, he's still keeping with the stick, but uh, we're going to play a lot. Once he gets it together, he's going to come down, we're going to strap it down, and then see what it makes because we have back-to-back -back runs on his pro charger for boost and mm -hmm. logs that match up with it so we can look at the fuel consumption look at the horsepower and pretty much calculate it straight across the board and see what the turbo is doing versus the supercharger right mm -hmm. off the bat it's pretty hard to get that because the nice thing is it's a standard too so you're pretty much there's the losses or the losses where you won't have the slip out of an automatic or the converter turning into mush if you don't have the converter right mm-hmm so it'll it should be pretty good, I think, to to get some concrete numbers, and then you can explain uh, why a supercharger is better than uh, a turbo, or vice versa. Which I, you know, that thing I think probably took 150 to 200 horse to turn. Yeah, well, that that's the other side of it. I mean, you've kind of freed up that power, with the exception, I guess, of the exhaust restriction side. You know, I mean, there's always a trade off, but I mean, that is, it's like having a big. Uh, horsepower expensive, you know, air conditioner on the front of your car. Yeah. I mean, yep. that's what that's like. So, yeah, I'm curious. I'm really curious. So we'll be able to look at the intake air temperatures too and, you know, go through the runs, see what it actually, what it does and how much more intake air temperature we are running in, in difference. Because the nice thing is, is we have all the injector data, the injectors, everything's staying the same pretty much. He's just putting a turbo on it. Mm -hmm. and I think he's just doing a slight freshen on it. So Okay. Yeah, so it's good good comparison, real good comparison. Hey, V at Billy says that your your voice is very, very soothing. soothing. Yeah. Oh, well, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's uh four ninety nine a minute. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Gotta pay for those parts somehow. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
It's 900 Blasco. All right, Matt. Well, I appreciate you calling in, and uh, I, I know we can share real quick, uh, You, unless you don't want to. Oh, yeah, you already said you bought a couple rifles. He, he never had an AR before. Oh, yeah, I got uh, some AR-15s before the government takes them away from us, right? The, That's yeah. right, man. The liberal rifle. You know, in Canada, eh? You can only have a five-round clip, eh? Yeah, I know, eh? It's terrible, hoser. And I know magazine. Shut the fuck up. You guys was making fun of everybody. Dude, why don't you buy an AR-10? They don't know about them. <laughs> they, don't, they don't know what they are. Well, any rifle up there is only a five-round five round magazine. Yeah. That's it. yeah. You can't put anything more than five rounds in them. They're all pinned to five. What's, yep. what's the name of your premier or whatever, whatever you call him? That guy oh, that's... Uh, in, Justin the, Trudeau. Yeah, Trudeau. Uh, yeah, he's... Not many people like him around here. There well, was, he's a uh, dick smoker. How could you like him? Oh, come on, man. Did I say it out loud? Yeah. Yes, you did. Damn it. Did you see the poll on Facebook? There was a dog stuck with his head stuck in a chair versus Justin Trudeau, and the dog won by 95%. I think it was, uh, it's still going on, but I think it's 40,000 to... Uh, <laughs> like seven? To, yeah, there's not many, and I think it's by people just clicking by accident because I saw a friend voted for him, and I, I texted him, like, are you my friend anymore or what? <laughs> He's like, oh, shit, I didn't even mean to, and he was all offended that he actually had voted for Justin Trudeau. That's how much people dislike him up here, it seems. Yeah, but, it, I mean, your politics up there must be as fucked up as ours are because we, we've got all kinds of craziness going on here, too. Um, yeah. So the, the the gun laws in your in your area, was that new? Like the five round thing, or is that what it's always no, been? It's been like that for a long time. Yeah, I don't know if Tom even knows this. I know it because my uncle called me and told me. I didn't know that. Um, they changed the magazine laws today to five. I mean, to ten from fifteen in Jersey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that means fuck them. That means like my my uh, six hour, which has like a magazine that's made to go with that gun. Is that now I, I don't even what's in handguns too? Yeah, it's everything. Get the fuck out of here. That's crazy. You well, know, the problem they could suck. is you look at like an AR 15, it's a restricted weapon. You can only take it to the gun range and back, and you have to have a tr- transport permit to go there and back. You can't go anywhere else with it. It's direct routes. Like they, it's pretty tight here. So if you're a competition handgun shooter, it's quite the pain in the butt. That's what they've made it here. Now, aren't you like kind of? I don't. I don't mean this badly, but aren't you like in the middle of nowhere, like more rural Canada? Oh yeah, I can shoot a gun on my back porch. Yeah. So, well, so can you, Mike. It's different though here because we get a lot now. There's a lot more rural crime, and it's not like the U.S. where somebody steps on your property and threatens you. You can't just shoot at them, right? Or you, they're more or less you're the criminal if you shoot the criminal. Yeah, it sounds like New Jersey because like here we have to run away. If somebody got in your house, if you can, if you have a way out. No, that's not true. The castle law. We have a nation of victims is what it is, right? Everybody's a victim now, and then yeah. if you're not a victim, you're a criminal. Well, just make sure you keep those things locked up. Don't tell them the combination because, you know, maybe they could find a way to get out. <laughs> you know, I mean, we got got to be careful here. Don't post the combination on Facebook. That's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you Don't you ever just, you got to flick one number, right? And then it's really easy to get to. <laughs> All right. Well, enjoy your rifles, have fun, and uh, and we'll be talking to you, Matt, for sure. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. All, All right, right. See you, man. Later. Okay. Bye. All the Canadians are good guys. I like everybody beat, but... Is Nitro excellent. Scott a Canadian? No, he's a U-taint. Yeah. Can we ban him for the rest of the Why? Day? What's he doing? Is he is he spouting off yeah, that he gun stuff? He's probably doing it on no, purpose. No school shootings in Canada. Oh, yeah, and I'm sure that's all because of the laws, Scott. That's the only reason. that they, Because they, they minimize the magazine. Everybody says, well, why bother? Yeah. <laughs> if, if we only have five, I mean, we'll just leave that all alone. I, I, that's Scott fucking with us. I'm sure he can't be that stupid. It's he's got to be. Yeah, he's a troll. All right. I'm, I'm really looking forward to Rich Guido's, uh, you know, power numbers. Yeah. Switching from one to the other. That, he's going to pick up. I know he's going to pick, pick up, up but lot. I want to know how much, you know, boost for boost. Where's the air curve? temperature to air temp, you know, what does he actually pick up? That That's going to be interesting. And especially driving it with a stick. I mean, yeah. I'm, I want to see. Because, I mean, isn't leaving with that kind of tough? Like, how do turbo guys leave with a stick? Bop, 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 bop. Yeah. Is that yeah. why they make all that nonsense oh. racket and everything? Yeah. Subarus farting and kicking out the exhaust and everything? Yeah. He yeah. was all of them. Yeah. Yep. It's, um, what did he call that? There's Launch a control, for... isn't it? Well, yeah, that's what two it step. is. But... Two step, yeah. Rolling two step. Well, rolling two steps when you're driving. Yeah. Yeah. All you guys are your nonsense stuff. Now you saw it in English Town when we took your 
Subaru swap Corvette that one day. Yeah, and those idiots were sitting there. It was a two-step contest. What and, the hell and was that this, all about? Junior said, that's, our, that's the way we make money building engines because these idiots are freaking spinning around. Right I mean, bearings. you know, this is, it's like, you're. I don't even know if you're a car guy if you enjoy that. I guess well, they were trying to make the most noise with a two-step. Mm-hmm. In Dubai, like big backfires and in all Dubai, kinds of stuff. they try to blow their stuff up like that. Yeah, do they really? Yeah, it's amazing. You could watch the drift, um, you know, the drift events, and you could see the exhaust manifolds and the turbos Blowing. under the car orange, and then parts and oil coming out. Boy, that sounds like a good time to me, huh? Wow, what a bunch of fucking idiots! I don't know. I don't. I guess it's this import culture, Ted, that I guess you've gravitated towards somehow. Sure. It's just, it's not for me. My car don't have launch control, so I don't know what you're talking about. All right. No. What, what do you, you just have a stock computer? Yep. You don't have an access port? Nope. Oh. Any lag. I got none of that stuff. Yeah, that's what it's called, any lag. Yeah. Yep. So uh, is this still with your JDM computer in this thing? Yeah. JDM. Okay. JDM for the win. Okay. All right, JDM. Just checking. just checking. Do we want Rich Guido to call in? I'd like him to. Fudd's been saying Rich calling, Rich calling, because Fudd apparently thinks he's a producer or something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's calling the shots. <laughs> nah, the only thing he's producing today is dinner for his wife. He's a, no. he's a knob job. Yeah, if Rich wants to call on, it's fine. Um, I like Rich. Yeah, me too. Plus, he's a ninja. He could beat, <laughs> he could beat us all up. Even Josh, yeah, yeah. maybe. <laughs> Is his phone in the background going to be bleep, 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 because people are texting him? No, all, no, all that, yeah, well, I don't know. I, I don't know if anybody knows that, but uh, did you hear Blasco's phone dinging? Who's going off? Yeah. That was Guido. <laughs> oh, <laughs> was it really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I was laughing. Yep, car guys are trolls. No yeah. doubt. Yes, they are. So, uh, d- you know, Ted, you could put the number up. Oh, 908-751-0211. 908-751-0211. Guido's probably halfway to Colorado to that race week there all he does is drive he does put a lot of time in that car oh yeah no doubt about it you know we should talk anthony's sitting here yeah i know we we should talk about his drag week deal let's do it what um all right so you're going to be a small block chevy guy because you got the shit yes so that that's where we're going with it um class and which class and why what made you decide what you're doing i'm going to go with the daily driver because the car it's just not that fast yeah um, I'm hoping to go 12s, 11s. So, daily driver is going to be the class. Mm-hmm. This would approach harder, but the uh, Vortec. Yeah, Vo- oh, sorry, my bad. It's a centrifugal little baby supercharger. How much power will it make? Go How ahead. baby of a supercharger? Yeah, maybe 500. No, if if you did, I think if you did everything wrong with a yeah. Vortec, it would have to make 500 I mean, by accident. It'll make that. Yeah, a couple of plug wires off. I think. All right. Well, let's say it makes 600. What's the car weigh? Four thousand. Ooh, what kind of car is it? A Malibu wagon. Are they go. are they that heavy? I guess they I, could be. I didn't think they were, but I drove it across the um the scales? The scales at Cecil. Oh, okay. Okay. So you actually know. Yeah. So it's four thousand with you. Four thousand even. Wow. Okay. That's gonna hook. Well, even at four thousand, I mean the thing will go in eleven is easy with with that kind of power. It'll make six hundred, probably. I think it would have to. Yeah. I mean, even with a with a, just a reasonable cylinder head, yeah, it would have to. It will. Cathedral? No, I mean it's it's a regular small block. It's, it has to. Ted, I mean, yeah. you think about what those stupid Mustangs made. Yeah, you know, not picking on the Mustang guys, but the, the Ford like three hundred two type heads, like the factory heads, they're dog shit. Yeah, I mean, they cut the sides off and fit in the car back in the day. You know, that's how it all. That's how the exhaust yep. port and everything got shaped like that. Yep, they'd make that. You know, a hundred years ago, they'd make that kind of power. What's he, don't even uh, tell me it's a cathedral port for a small block Chevy. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> Christ. Pro Max Performance Freedom Series. Hmm. They look pretty good. Yeah, that's, um, I'm on a budget, so that's my parts list right there. Hand blended. Well, we're going to. I can get you better stuff than that. Yeah, we're going to see what, what we can help you out yeah. with. We, yeah. We we know people that know people. We do. Including some Canadians. <laughs> What's up, Bay? What's going on? You guys are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> you hoser. That was so, I didn't know that was you calling him that, or texting him like that. That was, was fucking it hilarious. It was me calling, but I'm sure it was one of the clowns. <laughs> oh, I thought, because you, because you said, should I text him again? I thought you were dinging him the whole time. That was funny. You should have took credit for it because it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. All right. So you're, you're getting all set up. Um, 
tell uh, just so everybody knows, what are you going from and to in induction system? Yeah, so um, really the only thing that's going to be different is turbo compared to supercharger. So the exhaust um, system will be different because it's going to the turbo, obviously. Um, but the discharge of the turbo is going to follow the exact same route through the air to water intercooler. All that tubing is all going to be exactly the same pretty much as it was with the supercharger. So it, it should be a very good comparison, not changing transmission, not changing rear gears, really, um, you know, the restriction in the exhaust with the turbo will be, um, you know, part of it. But other than that, you know, it, we should be able to dial it in to make 12 pounds of boost or 10 pounds of boost um, for an exact comparison, but the turbo should make uh, more boost. Yeah, a lot more headroom, a lot more headroom. Yeah. Um, just so everybody knows about what your car actually is, uh, tell everybody what it is and what motor is actually in it. So it's, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a 517 cubic inch Pontiac, uh, four and stroke is 435, so it's square. Um, and it's a real Pontiac. It's a real Pontiac. Yep. Yeah. It's an aftermarket block. Um, but yeah, it's a real Pontiac. Was it Butler? So the headers are interesting because they're all tucked down low because Pontiac heads, um, the exhaust port faces down. So the headers are all still quite nicely hidden, um, towards the bottom of the block, but it makes quite a challenge to build them. Yeah. I forgot about that because the Pontiac, the, they, they turn like yeah, they, they have they like a down. longer exhaust port and kind of point down. I forgot about that. So where are the turbos going to be? Are they going to be up high or are they going to be down low? So it's one turbo and it's passenger side, <clears throat> excuse me, pretty much exactly where the pro charger was a little, okay. little bit further, further to the outside of the car. But yeah, so you just got a lot of plumbing going on. And what turbo is it? Did you say that? Did it's, I miss that? Uh, Borg Warner S500 SXE, I think. It's rated for nine, 900 to 2,000 horse. It's kind of the number, but you know, yeah, I guess we'll see. That's great. The old combination on Matt's dyno made, um, I think, 1,000 uncorrected at the wheels. Okay. Uh, I think there's going to be a substantial improvement there. And I, I be, I'm curious to see how it's going to be to drive, like to shift and to drive and see what it's like to make passes with it. Yeah. So it'll it's going to have an air compressor in the back, so I'll have full boost control. Um, I'm really expecting it to be more manageable once I've learned how to drive it with the turbo and learn how to manage the power, um, bringing the power in differently and uh, where the other one was, yeah, I mean, with the pulleys on it, it's like 900 foot pounds of torque at 3000 RPM and with a stick and a 4,000 pound GTO, it, uh, it was a little hard to manage. It'll be interesting to see what spinning the turbo does for fuel economy for 2,500 miles to get to Atlanta, but mm -hmm. it is what it is, I guess. I think if you're out of boost yeah. and you're I not really going to be better, I think, I think it'll probably be better. Yep. Well, were you taking a belt off rich or were you just, uh, how were I you? Was, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you I were take the belt off and, uh, um, and basically remove the inlet tubing to the, to the motor. So it wasn't sucking through the pro charger. Okay. So you just like bypassed it. Like you made your own bypass. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, this, this thing says it'll make, it's a 91 millimeter turbo and it'll uh, make 94 actually. Oh, I guess all the guy short. Yeah. S five hundred SX. Uh, I think yeah, S five hundred SXE or something. I yeah, it's oh. not or anyways. Okay. Yeah, it says nine to sixteen hundred. Wow, that's a pretty wide range. Yeah. But you yeah. see, this this is the conversation, Rich, and you've heard me toll on Alan about it. And you know, like for full disclosure, you know, Alan is my friend. I toll on him something terrible. Tom just don't like him. <laughs> but I mean, I I toll on him because he's my friend. What's to like? <laughs> well, you know, his wife is happy with his cooking. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> how does he like you? I don't know. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out. But I mean, I was trying to tell him this whole time, like with him going with the, the supercharger setup, that the, the thing that I would think would be the most challenging, and his is an automatic, but it's still going to be managing power delivery his and what? transition from leaving to, you know, you know to, to actually probably the tail end of the 60 foot. And I mean, I, I think that, I think that 
from everything that I could imagine, that you're going to have a much better time of this because you got your thing to run awful good having to drive it. I, I think this will be a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. I, the reality is, is you've got to change pulleys with the supercharger. With the turbo, I mean, you can pretty much dial it in. Yeah. Yeah, um, and you can dial on the ramp and the curve. Yeah. You could leave. Yeah, if you need more boost off the line, it's not a problem adding it. And uh, if you just want to bring it on a little further down, you can do that too. How good are these things at maintaining the boost level that you set? Like if you have a rapid they're change good. in RPM. They're like, good. I mean, they're they're responsive enough. And I guess with air on top of it, you can really. Yeah, you're doing it with air, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're good. Because the amount I drive it, I didn't really want to worry about CO2, even though I know it lasts a long time. Um, yeah, I might need to pass a few people on the way to Atlanta. I don't know. Okay. Right. Got it. Well, yeah. we'll be uh, we'll be looking forward to it. And look, whatever you need, like I know Tom sent it to you. If you need something, let him know. Yeah, I I, uh, I got to finish up this hot side, and then I got to pull a motor and send it down to my guy. And Tom Tom's met Todd before. Yep. So we'll be looking for some exhaust valves for a turbo setup. So yeah, he's got my card. Just and to, for the people that yeah. don't know, Rich built like all the shit. His own cage, learned to take weld, you know, did it, did everything. Like he's, and I, so I imagine you're doing all your own headers and all your own stuff, right? Yeah. Yep. And he's a ninja. And he's a ninja. Legit ninja. Yep. Real, real life ninja. All right. I think he can beat up Chuck Norris. Maybe. Ooh, Not maybe. many people can say that. 10 years, I, oh, uh, maybe another 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> it might be 90. Will he be 90 then? Probably. Yeah, he Probably. will. Probably. Wouldn't know it, yeah, though. he is looking pretty rough. Yeah, you know, I saw, I saw him. I mean, not, not lucky. He'd probably still kick my ass. I'm not saying anything, but I, I saw him on TV the other day. I was like, wow, <laughs> you know, time sucks. Yeah, I wouldn't mess with him. All right, Rich, we'll keep us informed and let us know how you make out. Good luck with your build. Thanks, man. See ya. All right, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> Those hosers, <laughs> they are such good dudes. They are, they are, and. I mean, on like I, I talked about about this. I think if I didn't live here, I'd want to live there. Yeah, like this is this is probably choice number one, and definitely not here. Other than but, Trudeau, but yeah, but just yeah, ignore him. Yeah. All right, Anthony. So let's get back to your deal. Um, the the like all the heads and all the stuff that you're talking about. I mean, we can say like what's around and what's available. I mean, there are some things like you know, and I had told you before before we started that there are some situations like when the circle track guys have rule changes and, or they're, they're going to a spec head or, or they're, you know, moving away from a spec head to something else. There's a lot of parts out there. If you know where to look, there, there's an awful lot of them because I, I hate to tell you how much big block shit I got. That's useless to anybody. Really? Oh my God. <laughs> I've got, and because it's all oddball shit, you know, it can't be big giant stuff. You know, we had rules. So the motor could be 380 inches. Somebody, I think, uh, what was asking me about it? can't remember somebody was asking me, but they were asking me if you had any big block stuff. And I said, yeah, I got a lot of it, but I don't think it's anybody, anything that anybody could use. They're like 480 inch with like a 305 CC head. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, what the hell would anybody, I mean, it's just a big, heavy, shitty, small block. At yeah. That that's really what it is to just make a lot of power. Cause these things, you know, high gear restarts and everything they had. So it's a weird thing, but I mean, for what you're doing, a small block is kind of a small block. And there's a lot of stuff out there. I mean, I guess the only thing is since you have headers already, we need standard configuration exhaust. Yes. So uh, that's all right. Uh, like an AFR two twenty seven type head or one of the well Yeah, I don't know if uh if like the Brodex spec head, like I don't know what they had for exhaust pattern. I don't know if they were spread or they no, were standard. No, they're standard. They're standard? Uh, standard height and everything. I yeah. bet there's a couple sets of them kicking around for nothing. And probably some good ones. Yeah. You I, might be right. Or you get one of the ones where the guy got bounced because he cheated him up a little yeah. bit. I bet you there's, I'm going to make some phone calls on that one. I might be able to help you. I think I might know good. right where there is a set. Well, the one call to, Mar to Martino might <clears throat> take care of a lot of it. Yeah. He might have some stuff. You don't have any small block stuff left, huh? All iron stuff. No blocks? Um, no, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Well, I have to look, but I mean, there's some iron cylinder heads. Um, yeah, but you don't want them. Yeah, I mean, they're, that that would be like a, what what was the size? Were they Dart 200s? Or Two, were they 180s? They were Dart 180s. And then they had all the, you no, know, they camouflage were, work. No, they were Sportsman 2s. They were, they were 200s at that point, I think. No. Um, these were, uh, they're the Iron Eagle. I think they're 180s. God, I, isn't that fucked up? I can't remember that. They're 200s. What are the sizes that they made? 
Is this a dart head or a world head? Dart. They made a 180, they made a 200. Then they ended up making a 230. Isn't it a 230? Yeah, I don't know, whatever they are. But whatever the whatever the dirt, dirt sportsman stuff was, um, I've got a ton of that. But it's angle milled to shit like 38cc chambers and yeah, all kinds of stuff. It's yeah. not not the kind of thing you'd want to do for, for this kind of work. Yeah. No, and not to make power and run on pump gas either. Yeah. So I got a question about a valve train. And um, how much lift do you think you could safely run on the street? Tad? Yes. <laughs> that's, my- that's Tad's answer, yes. <laughs> Hey, I'm Subaru, man. This is out of my category. All right. Good. Um, it, lift on the street. I mean, realistically, the, you know, we've talked about this before. The lift is kind of, uh, I always view it as if you have enough. Um, yeah. Know, to, I mean, it's a blower. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even put a lot of thought into that. I mean, something average. Um, For reliability. 630. Yeah. 600, 630. That's all. It's it's all you need. I mean, you have the advantage of of forced induction. It's the beauty of having a blower. Yeah, yeah. I I don't I don't think. And not only that, I think that everything you know that we've had our discussions before. Lift. Yes, the spring goes through a larger motion, but what really hurts springs is out of control valve train. That's really what does more than anything. If the valve train's yep. in control, it can handle an awful lot of lift. Yep. An yep. awful. I mean, without you That's know, true. depending on the springs and the quality of everything. I think we got bank shift Billy call now, but we got three phone callers. Yep. What's up, man? Hey, not there. He put us on hold. Oh, maybe. Imagine that. I don't know. Those guys do a lot of drinking. He might have forgot he called. Yeah, he might <laughs> I know I called somebody. You remember that they called from? Uh, oh, from at, yeah, the yeah, Colorado. They were all fucking tuned yes, up. They were. <laughs> that was actually funny. So I mean, I, I wouldn't. I would put more emphasis on you know, valve train control and selection of components rather than the actual lift side itself. Uh, I don't think that's going to be the determining factor. Um, the drawback that you probably have is that all of the modern day motors are hydraulic rollers from the factory. You know, you could use a decent tap it and put everything together. I mean, I don't honestly know what there is available for a small block Chevy to be a hydraulic roller. No, you, you got to buy it. You got to buy a retrofit. Yeah. And there are a lot of money and you're going to have to spend that money. Yeah. Because I don't think, did the dart blocks have a, have a, like a dog bone pad machined into them mm. or not? You know, they might actually. Because I know some of them were tall because then people got all fucked up trying to put lifters in. You know, they actually might. All right, we might have Billy back here. Hello. Hello. Hey, what's up? Thanks for Billy here. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you? Good. I think I think Rich is going to whoop you this year, buddy. Sounds like he's hungry. He might. <laughs> I probably deserve it after last year. <laughs> well, I guess you're the whole reason that he uh, he actually moved to the turbocharged side. I think so. Yeah, I think he's going to like it a lot better though. Um, you know, I think, like he said, launching with 900 foot pounds of torque with a stick shift is real challenging, and it's hard on parts. Yeah, I mean, it didn't break anything, but it's, it's it'll beat up on stuff. I think that kind of in itself is a miracle. All the passes and time you put on that car and then drove it home. That's uh, a yeah. that's impressive. Yeah. It was really impressive. Yeah, he's he's my hero for sure. But uh, you know, I, I did some testing. I made some changes to my car over the winter too. Um, uh, mostly chassis and stuff. Uh, put full Menser shocks all the way around, and was actually able to go test this weekend in Pueblo. Which right now it's snowing. We're supposed to get like six inches of snow tonight, so it was kind of a window, which was nice. But uh, yeah, just a huge, huge difference in the way the car reacts. It's just remarkable. Um, so I'm really anxious now. I feel like it can really start to add some power on the hit, whereas before it was just, you know, just shocked the whole drivetrain, and it was kind of like just trying to manage that and not have wheel speed, you know, going out of control. And um, I also kind of copied uh, Magnus Motorsports has a uh, launch control deal for a hydraulic diaphragm style clutch. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm not. I am. Basically, it uh, ties in with a line lock. So it's when I hit the line lock for the front brakes, it also hits this line lock for the clutch. And what it does is divert the fluid so that when you release the clutch, it diverts the fluid through a small um, hydraulic flow control valve, you know, just a little... uh, Pillar. Yeah, yeah, like a little pencil valve that you can adjust. 
and uh, that softens up the hit of the clutch. Oh, I, I got you. So you could release the yeah. Yeah. You could yeah. dial Just, in the release speed. Yeah, that's pretty badass, yeah. Yeah, but, but it's, keep in mind, I'm not releasing it with the button. You're still dumping the clutch like you normally would, but it's diverting the fluid through that uh, pintle valve. So basically, I have a diaphragm clutch that I can adjust like a long style now. Mm -hmm. uh, so you actually calibrate the speed it, it engages. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, and this weekend, like, I didn't think it was working. And my first pass, it, it launched so soft. It was like an automatic. That somebody launched to the big converter in second gear. It was just like, whoa. And it still did like a 14460. I was like, holy shit. And then I started dialing it back. And uh, you get a little bit more aggressive with it. But I only got three passes. So, um, But I, I have a kind of a funny story on the way home. Uh, we stopped for a bite to eat and was trying to turn around, you know, go down the road, do a U-turn. This jackass in a truck wouldn't let me in, so I got on it a little bit more than I should have. The car went a little bit sideways, had the trailer on it, and the trailer bounced from side to side, and it freaking bent the uh, axle on the one side and tried to get a U-Haul to put the trailer on to get it home. Couldn't find one. And ended up uh, just driving it home with this freaking tire that was totally tweaked. But the tire doesn't look weird at all. The hub didn't get hot. It just, <laughs> just being stupid. But it looked like a stance car now with their stupid cambered and pointed tires? Oh, uh, well, no. The weirdest thing, it was pointed down. So the top edge of the tire was pointed out past the fender. And I don't know how that even happened, but it must have bounced hard. or I don't even know. I got I got really lucky and I had to drive 130 miles home with it like that. So, uh, well, that'll learn you. <laughs> yeah, don't be stupid. All right. So, what do you got uh, scheduled for events? Where are you going to go? Are you going to do Drag Week or no? Or are you just going to do the one out there? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to do Drag Week. I'm going to do Rocky Mountain Race Week this year. That's in June. It's early, mm -hmm. and I've got my fingers crossed that Rich is going to get his stuff together and make that. Uh, yeah, it would be awesome. There's so much fun racing him last year. Um, and then Matt Frost, you know, he puts on Rocky Mountain Race Week. He's got uh, he's got some no prep stuff going on here, and there's a Colorado Street Outlaws event in Pueblo. Um, but I think they're limiting that to a radial tire, and I don't know if I want to do that. But uh, yeah, there's a few uh, events here, stick shift type events, street car events that I'm going to try to hit this year. Okay. So, well, if any of those guys want to call in and plug stuff, like plug the events, you know, we always do that. And, you know, it wasn't much to talk about over the winter, but now there's more and more stuff coming up. So, yeah, have somebody call yeah. in if they want. Has Matt Frost been on the show before? I don't remember. No, I don't believe so. Nope. All right. I'll I'll, I'll, uh, I'll whisper in his ear and see if we can get him to call in. All right. Fantastic. In future here, so. Cool. Yeah. All right. Maybe Tom and I will try to get out there for that race week. Thing. Colorado that'd be, thing? Yeah. That'd be nice. I would just like to go out there and go out there. Yeah. Well, it's not. It's not actually in the same places now, right? No, it should be called uh, Great Plains Race Week this year because there's no mountains involved. It starts and ends in Great Bend, Kansas. Yeah, because I thought I asked if there's uh, mountains in Kansas, and everybody looked at me like I was retarded. Uh, well, you are. <laughs> well, you might be retarded, but it is out east. <laughs> um, yeah, it's. Uh, and I forget all the tracks right now, but it's out east. Uh, you know, Kansas. I think Topeka's on the list. Uh, they were going to have Mocan, but uh, they changed it to another track not far from there, which I'm kind of glad of because I think Mocan has those steel guardrails and not really interested in running there. So. All right. Well, we'll keep on, on top of it as it gets closer, and we'll see. Yeah. Awesome. All right, man. Awesome. Have a good night. Thanks yeah. for calling. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, dude. Yep, thanks. See ya. Yeah. We're getting a lot of shit in the chat room. Those, but... those two guys were great. I know about yeah. the episodes. Look. Yeah. Let me tell you what, any of you motherfuckers were in my shoes for five minutes, you'd probably kill yourselves. So don't, I'm, I got so much shit going on, you have no idea. Yeah, the thing is, yeah. All, all the people in the chat room aren't the ones that are, that are crying that because they only download, they don't listen to live. Yeah, I mean, they're listening so, live. It, yeah. What are you people bitching about? You got to hear it once. Well, they're reading, yeah. they're, they're reading what the other people, oh, it's, it's done, they haven't posted one again. It's like, no, they're, we're live. Yeah, we're it's because our one, competition no. scared us out. That's yeah. what it was. And Fudd's on here saying, yeah, I'll talk to Mike. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll rattle his yeah. cage. I'll do. Don't you have to bake a souffle or something? For fuck's sake. Jesus Christ. Tighten up your apron. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Alan. <laughs> 
All right, so let's get back to Anthony's thing. Yeah, you could have made fun of FUD once, at least. These guys are too nice. <laughs> yeah, they are too nice. Aren't they? Yeah, they're first-timers. So. That's why we like them. It's not that we're too nice. You know, you just sit back and just watch the format. Yeah, <laughs> next time you will, right? Yeah, so I, I I don't know if you guys are figuring it's a, boy, this is this is really a well-produced show. This is when I say there's, you know, some nitwits sitting in a spare bedroom. That's really what it is. <laughs> it's, cool with it. it is what it is. Hey. All right, so... um. Your car that you're going to, Anthony, your car that you're going to use, how much is done to it right now? I nothing. mean, no cage, no nothing. It's just straight up street car. Yeah, just the um, injection install. That's it. Okay. All right. So this is the car that you put the self-learning EFI stuff on. Yeah. Okay. And you're going to stick with that when you move to this? Yeah. Okay. Um, Holly EFI. Yeah. And how did it end up working? Like after more time went on it, like, I mean, you know, did you pick up over the carburetor? How much better did it get? Well, this one is, it runs bad. Uh, the injectors are too big. It's a 305. Okay. And it's, it just runs terrible and rich. Okay. So it needs more motor and it should run better. I would have thought it would take care. It would have taken care of that regardless of how big the injectors are. No, they're they're way too big for that motor. Well, let me ask you. But wait a minute. How big are they? That but that thing is like um, that's not a hollow. Is that a is that a port injected or is that a throttle body with the injectors in it? The throttle body. Right. Oh. So okay. now you, you've got it gets a little little bit more complicated mm -hmm. as far as how how it manages it. So yeah, I, I could believe that they're probably but a range. I have two two setups. Yeah. The other one has the um the multi point. Yeah, that's what you and need. And that one ran a lot better. Yeah. Well, that's the one you actually called on, right? The yeah. multi-point one. Yeah, the two-door. Where did where did that go to and from carburetor to multi-point? Like track, you know, pass to pass. Did you ever get good data on it or no? Um, it used to, with the carb. It ran twelve thirties, mm -hmm. and now I think it went eleven eighty. Oh, with the injection. Yeah, so it it definitely picked up over mm. the carburetor. I mean, uh, look, I've, I've always said this before. It probably means that the carburetor wasn't particularly good <laughs> because really they yeah, shouldn't be they a lot should better. Be. Yeah, right. But I mean, you didn't really have to do programming, right? Like this kind of made its own sauce. No, off the, um, the bass tune and every pass, it got better and better. That's pretty neat that you could actually get that to work like that. All right. Well, yeah. we're going to see if we can find you. Yeah. For parts we'll look and for stuff. Some shit. I got some calls i can make i don't that think i have good. anything really parts wise yeah you may not i was just thinking yeah i mean i remember day days when you had a lot of small block stuff but i'm gonna look and see if there's any blocks but i don't think so yeah probably not i don't think so i don't have shit for small blocks anymore all right yeah everybody's ls me included Ugh. all right well anything else from anyone else no i'm got, i'm going to florida yeah when are you leaving I'm leaving Thursday. I come back Saturday night, and then uh, Monday morning I'm going to Dubai. Oh, that's right. Oh, You're gone. Again, yeah. How long yeah. are you gone for? Um, I'm going to be gone from Monday till the following Wednesday. Okay. So two Mondays. These guys might have to come in and and do a show. Well, I was figuring, uh, you know, calling the B team. You know, Alan. Oh, that's the B team. Yeah, for bitch. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was say that's like the Q team. No, I mean we'll 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 try to figure something out. Yeah. Um. Or uh, did you get to the bottom of the, I guess we can ask, the situation, like you had talked to Allison about it, about the dyno that you're using? No, there? did not, did not. Okay. And actually, I got to do that. Allison, you might want to get on that because yeah. uh, that might be a deciding factor. Is she me. in the chat room? I didn't see it. See her. No, because uh, they, they had a tuning school. A tuning school was oh. going on down there today. I'll call her. Yeah. But you might be able to say hi to somebody mm. when you call. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll just let that go. Yeah. All right. Anything else from you guys? No. No? Shout outs. Shout outs to anything. anything. You could say how wonderful it was to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Learn a lot of information. Yeah. Learn a lot of information. Good. So that's that's the main thing. You mean from the show in general? Oh well, yeah. Yeah, well we we try. I mean, I don't know, you know, we've covered a whole bunch of stuff, but you know, I mean like Tom said we're gonna run out of guests. I don't think we're running out of guests, it's just a matter of getting people to come on. It's sometimes a little tough. Yeah. But we'll, we'll get some. Well, but, how many people we have local to us, too? So, you know. Well, yeah, the and the coming in part is yeah. usually easier than the phone call. Definitely easier for us. Oh, yeah, yeah. Much easier. It's way cooler. And like I said, you know, I remember uh, Jason Dozier said that, you know, one day he might be up here. Yeah. But if he's yep. up here, be come cool. on in. Just let me know. We'll, we'll certainly be glad to have you. All right. So nothing else from anybody else? Tad? Not. Next week, you should have some horsepower numbers, right? 
Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> I haven't even talked to freaking Kevin. I have nothing scheduled. But I have to get the freaking hubs on, stuff like that, before any of this crap. Goes well, I thought you said they were going to put the hubs on. Wow, there it is. There it goes. Yeah, here it goes. There it goes. We're, 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 we're going to go off the rails them. right now. I don't know. It all depends on if Tom takes my freaking. Well, he said he would. Right. So now wait a minute. Do you have to wait till Friday before you can talk to him? Or can you call him like tomorrow and find out what's going on? I'm just asking. Call him tomorrow and say, did Tom drop okay. off the nut? All right. Well, the, uh, the, the, just at, at some point or another, we talked about this and it was like, I don't know. It's not Friday. Cause I, <laughs> he said, you couldn't call whatever. I'm not going to get you started. It's, it's towards the end of the show. I don't want you to leave. Wait, wait, so, you know, you're, t- oh, I can't put the th- things up because I have too much to do, but nobody else can have too much to do. Oh yeah. Like you got a lot to do. The guy who's taking pictures of food every five minutes Yeah, for okay. fuck's sake. My um, God. From the guy that doesn't go on Facebook, but seems to know what I'm putting on Facebook. I didn't. I, now, if I knew that, wouldn't I know that your car was running? Wouldn't I have done that? I, I think know. it's time to cue the music. Yeah, it is time. You guys can fight offline. <laughs> All right. So you're going to, you're going to at least try to get, you know. I'm, yeah. I'm with the damn thing about. I want to drive the goddamn thing. Okay. All right. Well, it's just been an awful long time, Ted. That's all I'm saying. Yes, it has. That's all I'm saying. Just, Probably going to you know, put new brake He needs it now. He doesn't yeah, have anything to drive. Yeah, Satan, imagine that. You know, out of necessity, he'll, he'll start to imagine he finds out his phone can call those guys, you know, on any day other than Friday. <laughs> that was an enlightening day. It was. All right. Well, we'll be back. Uh, well, I don't know if I'll be back next week. Maybe not. Uh, thanks for coming out. in, guys. Yeah, thanks for we coming in. We appreciate you, too. Definitely. Thanks for having us. We appreciate right. it. See you, guys.